Hi, this is Kim with Kim and Perry. Oh, wait, perryandkim.com, but we also have kimandperry.com, just in case you mess it up like I just did. Um, this is Kim Coughlin, and I want to show you one of the things that I really love about the repricer Seller Snap. We're still big fans of Be Cool. I think it's a great entry level tool. It's served us well for several years. Um, and this, the price on Seller Snap does not make sense for every seller. It's expensive, so you got to be at a certain level before it really makes sense for you. But uh, when it makes sense for you, it's going to make you money. That's how you know if it makes sense. It gets us about an extra dollar per item, and it costs $800 a month. We were paying around $150 a month for uh, Be Cool, which means we upped it by $650. We sell a lot more than 650 items per month, so that extra dollar a month that it's getting us after the first 650 items is all gravy. Here is one of the reasons that I think it works really well. It has a lot of sophisticated filters that let us reprice um, on a much more granular level than we were doing previously. So it was, it's always been pretty easy, if you're comfortable with spreadsheets, to go in and figure out what items are over 90 days old. So we've consistently repriced when items hit the 90 day point and we've gotten rid of our stale inventory. But with Seller Snap, they have a set of filters that make it pretty easy to go in there and reprice, for example, reprice items that have had no sales in the last 30 days. So I have this preset filter that I can just click on and what it brings up, here's the, this is the settings for the filter. I chose all the items that have repricing turned on, all the items that are in stock and FBA backordered, everything that is in stock for at least 90% of the past 30 days. So what that does is make sure that it didn't just come into stock recently or that it hasn't been in transfer status forever and just finally became available. This is items that have been in stock and available for at least 27 of the last 30 days and zero revenue. So these are items where we have no sales after 30 days of availability. So what we do is export visible columns, which is going to be everything. I don't want to show you what's down there because I don't want you to see all our personal stuff, but it will export everything that's in the table down below the screen. If you don't have the $800 version, we're forced to because of our number of SKUs. But if you can slide by on the, I think it's a $500 version, you won't have all the filters to um, set this up and easily create it and get to it in one click like I do. But you will have all that data if you choose to export all columns, that bottom option. And then with a little bit of Excel magic, just filtering and sorting, you'll be able to get to the same set of SKUs right here. So I've already sorted it with their built-in filter. I'm just going to click export visible columns. So it'll take, because it's a big download, I already peaked, it's over 5,000 SKUs we have that have been in stock for 30 days and have not had any sales. It's going to take 30 or 45 seconds to, to pull it down. That's not too long, right? See, there it is. It's ready now. I already cheated and downloaded it. Got it ready. I hid my ASINs and stuff from you because I don't want to, I don't want the whole world to see that stuff. That's okay, right? But here's what the raw file looks like. There is, there are a lot of columns here that I don't need for what I'm doing. All I'm going to do is go in and trim down my min and max prices by 3%. So I don't need any of that. I'm going to just cut and paste the column headings so I can make sure that they are exactly precisely right. And then I'm going to use a couple of formulas. So <clears throat> the really easy, straightforward thing to do here would be 0.97 times my min price, right? The problem is some of these are old. Some have been cut a lot of times already. And I don't want my mins to ever, ever, ever dip below $7 because at that point we're probably just losing money. So I do a little more sophisticated version of this. I say I want the greater or the max of these two options, 0.97 times that current min price or $7. Those are the two choices and it's going to choose the higher one. So almost across the board, it's just going to be 
of my current min price, which is 3% off. Over here, it's similar, but again, I want to make sure, this time, I want to make sure that my max price is at least 10% higher than my min price. So I'm going to tell it to choose the greater of 97% times my current max, or my min times 1.1, which would be 110% of my min, 10% higher than my min. Got it? Here's what that looks like. Choose the max of, click on that, times 0.97, comma, and then we'll give it the next choice. 1.1 um, times my new min price. Close the parentheses and hit enter. So there's all my max prices. Now we have to do two things with these columns to make them work. We have to copy and then we have to paste values. So now instead of being formulas, they're actually really numbers. The other thing we have to do, let me highlight them again, right click, format cells, turn them into a number with two decimal points. No separator, no dollar sign, just number, two decimal points. Okay, now these are the correct format. We can delete the old min and max columns, and this is ready to go. I do personally have one other thing I have to do here. I've got to filter out a few um, that we do not want to reprice. So I'm just going to put you on hold. Bye. Okay, I'm back. That did not take long at all. That was like a 30 second operation. You might want to do this if you have items um, that, have, that are subject to map pricing where you don't want to go below a certain point. If you have some wholesale buys that you know we're going to take a while to sell through and you're willing to just wait it out and you don't want to cut your prices. In our case, we have some group buys that we don't want to go below a certain level because it's kind of like wholesale. We just want to wait it out, wait for the prices to come back. We knew it was going to take a while. It's okay that some of those units are over 30 days with no sales. So I just filtered those out. Now I'm ready to go. I need to hit the Save button. Come back here to the same button where I downloaded it, Actions. This time I'm going to Import. I'm going to choose the file that I just downloaded and edited. And if you're not quite positive which one it is, just hit the Date Modified because it'll be the most recent one, the one you just worked on a second ago, 12.58. Yes, two minutes ago. Open, Import. And that is all you have to do. I just edited over 5,000 listings. And if I wasn't talking to you, it would have taken me about two and a half minutes. I've actually timed the operation before. It's that fast and easy. If you had to do your own slicing and dicing on the filters, which I've done in the past before I realized how easy these filters were to work with, it's more like a five or seven minute operation. Even so, these filters are so sophisticated, you can do a million different things. You don't need to do exactly what I did, but I hope I gave you a little bit of an idea of the possibilities with SellerSnap and why we switched over to it.